Kumasi, a city in the Ashanti region, one of the largest metropolitan areas in Ghana. The region is endowed with abundant arable lands which support the production of cash crops such as cocoa, coffee, oil palm, and food crops like cassava, plantain, yam, cocoa yam, maize, vegetable, and rice. Rice consumption in Ghana continues to increase due to population growth, urbanization and change in consumer habit which make it an important strategic crop in the economy, being cultivated as both food and cash crop. According to statistics from Ministry of Food and Agriculture, the total rice consumption in 2020 amounted to about 1,450,000 metric tons and is considered not enough and so Ghana depends largely on imported rice to make up for the deficit in domestic rice supply. It is against this backdrop that more efforts are being made to promote rice farming not only for food security and nutrition but also for business a reason to help mitigate poverty and create jobs for the youth. At the center of the push for better crops and innovative farming in rice is the Crops Research Institute at Ghana's Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, CSIR. The Crops Research Institute has a broad research mandate covering all food and industrial crops. I am a senior research scientist uh, with specialty in soil and water engineering. I work with the CSIR Crops Research Institute in Ghana. Dr. Patricia is leading a project with men and women farmers to understand the interaction of water and nutrients on rice production. I'm engaged um, as a PEI, that is a principal investigator in two uh, research activities here. One is um, looking at agrivoltaic systems in dry lands of West Africa and the other one is looking at the interaction of alternate wetting and drying on genotypes in uh, West Africa. Upland rain-fed rice, lowland rain-fed rice and irrigated rice are the three main rice production systems in Ghana. The lowland rain-fed system covers 78% of the arable area. The irrigated system covers 16% while the upland system covers 6%. The production system is therefore heavily dependent on rain, but alternative wetting promises to save a significant amount of water required for production. We were researching on the interaction of water and nutrients on rice production. We have seen that farmers are struggling to get water for their crops. Uh, more, more so, they have to spend a lot of money in pumping this water to their crops. And we know rice is a heavy feeder when it comes to water and nutrients. We are realizing that they are using too much water for the crop, as well as spending more on finances. So that is how we thought wise to use the alternate wetting and drying technology. So we brought up a very simple tool. You insert this uh, tube in the field and then you, you monitor gradually the moisture level in that particular tube. One, two, Patricia is keen on the sustainability of the project and hence her close working relationship with extensionists who carry on the work even in her absence and ensure the technology is spread beyond the region. The research has really trained me and I also come and train the farmers. The farmers are able to adopt new technologies and some of the farmers are even also able to teach other farmers. And the culture to us, a mini animal man, a Yabeshi has seen, or whom I am your cray and Yamfa and Shia and Fungui, it is a better devil. Now say, you will move my ammonia beer, say ye debay, Mana, a boy and a Yaman and a Yukunan. The end goal of the project is to empower rice farmers to produce harvest as well as process the rice in Ghana to cater for the increase in rice demand.
what the farmers have noticed is that even though they are not giving it as much water, they are still getting the yields that they have uh, they are supposed to get and even more. And then they have saved on from between 30 to 50 percent of water resources, saving them in energy cost for pumping the water, in labor cost, and even time wise. <laughs> So this is a very simple tool that uh, the farmers are using to measure the soil moisture. You measure at every three centimeters and punch holes. You insert this tube um, in this direction to the field. You get 15 centimeters up and 15 centimeters down the soil. One drop of that hole, it means that the water in this has dropped by three centimeters. So when you get to the last but one, it is about time that the farmer irrigates. So we do uh, recommend that they use this in their rice fields and monitor the moisture before attempting to irrigate. As an award fellow, Dr. Patricia has set higher goals for the benefit of local farmers. What I have taken to heart at most uh, is in working with our um, female farmers, that is uh, becoming a gender responsive scientist. After my fellowship, I made efforts to be gender responsive in everything that I do. One of the fellows um, proposed that we do institutional mentoring, where the senior scientists mentor the young scientists and even some of the young technicians and technical uh, persons here. And I have been selected on several occasions to become a mentor. And this started after I have uh, completed my mentoring with award. Uh, so far, I have mentored three persons, two young female scientists and one male, male scientist with a PhD. Patricia is one of the award fellows leading critical innovations in the agricultural sector to provide sustainable solutions to the smallholder farmers. As part of the fellowship, we had to define our purpose and we, we drew up the purpose roadmap and it became the guiding principle uh, which we, we were mentored on. My aim actually is to become a chief research scientist. So with what I was able to do with my mentor now, I see that I need to build up on every aspect to be, to be able to become ready as at the time that I need to be promoted. So I am working assiduously on all those aspects as well as uh, working on my career, working with the uh, farmers, working with my colleagues and everything, everything else in between my career.